Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routing and switching essentials. This is chapter 11, network address translation, NAT. Section 11.2, configuring NAT. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to configure static NAT using the command line interface, configure dynamic NAT using the command line interface, configure path using CLIs, configure port forwarding using CLI, and configure NAT64. Okay, let's have a look at very quickly because in section 11.1 uh, we talked a lot more about static and dynamic NAT. This is just the configuration of static NAT. So we have to go to the global configuration mode and in there we type IP NAT inside source static and the IP address, the local I inside local IP address being translated to inside global IP address. So what local address we're going to translate it to what global address. Once we're done with that, we have to go to the router interface and define which side of the router is inside network and which side of the router is outside network. And the command is IP NAT inside for inside area or inside local area and IP NAT outside for towards outside network. To configure dynamic NAT example, so first we create an access list that permits what network that we want to translate. So for example, we are permitting the network connected to PC2. And then we create a pool which defines what addresses, what public address range we have. So for example, IP NAT pool, and then name, give it a name, and then the start of the, the public addresses that we have, and then the finish of the public addresses that we have. So from dot two two six to dot two forty, those are the public addresses that we have purchased. Netmask two five five two five five two five five two two four. Then we bind the access list to the pool. So but the command is IP NAT inside source list one pool NAT pool. So we the list so this pool one should be translated to uh, sorry this access list one should be translated to this pool. So we can create another access list for PC1, for example, a network on PC1, and being translated to another pool, some other pool. And then we need to define the inside interface and outside interface. So we can see it in router 2, S04.0.4.0 is IP NAT inside, and interface serial S04.1.4.0 is IP NAT outside. Port address translation, or PAT for short, will map multiple private IP addresses or private IPv4 addresses to a single public IPv4 address or few addresses. PAT uses the pair source port and source IP address to keep track of what traffic belongs to what internal clients. PAT is also known as NAT overload. By also using the port number, PAT forwards the response packet to the correct interface device. The path process also validates that the incoming packets are, were requested, those adding a degree of security to this session. If we compare NAT with PAT, NAT translates IPv4 addresses on one-to-one -one basis between private IPv4 and public IPv4 addresses. So one-to-one, -one, first come, first serve. While PAT modifies both the address, source address, and the source port number. NAT forwards incoming packets to the inside the destination by referring to the incoming source IPv4 address provided by the host on the public network. With PAT, there is generally only one or a few public, publicly exposed IPv4 addresses. PAT is able to translate protocols that do not use the port numbers, such as ICMP. Each one of these protocols is supported differently by port address translation. So NAT overload, or PAT, uh, the NAT router keeps track of the different conversation by mapping TCP and UDP port numbers in the translation tables. This is called an extended table entry. So it keeps track of port numbers, what port numbers I've translated. So for example, if you translate this PC, so it keeps the whatever the port, the, whatever the, the inside global IP address that I have translated to, so from this local address, 192.168.10.10, I translate to this global address. And same for 11, for the PC number 11, dot 11, 
I translate it to the same one. This is not possible. Is this is not possible with the static net or dynamic net? They can't translate to the same public IP address. With the path, yes, because path not that we just translate in the IP address, but we are translating the port numbers as well. The router will try and keep the port numbers the same, but it doesn't have to, and it will keep this information that is translated on the extended table entry. The destination port number remains the same. The router is not going to translate or is not going to change the destination. Well, it should, if, it, if it does, then it's bad. For example, if the PC is trying to go to port 80, which is web server, and the router is translated to 443, then it's not going to be successful. So the only thing we translate is the source port number as well as the source IP address. To configure the path using a pool, because we can configure it on the interface or with a pool, like dynamic net, you're happy to know that it's exactly the same as the dynamic net. But add in one more command or one more word. We create a list, access control list, to say to permit what addresses from what networks they should be translated. We create the pool like before, what addresses or IPv4 addresses, public addresses we have available. And then we bind the pool to the, uh, sorry, the access list to the pool. So if I go back and say IP net inside, so this access list with the number one, they should be translated to the pool called net pool two. But this time we say overload. So we, we are translating the port numbers as well. To verify a path using a pool example, we do show IP net translations. And we can see if there's been translated this IP address with this port number has been translated to this address and with this port number. Now the port numbers, eh, usually the router will try and keep the same, but imagine for some reason, uh, coincidence, there's another PC comes with the same port number. Then obviously is the router can, can keep it different and we'll, we'll translate the port numbers as well. I know it doesn't match the access list here, 11.0, and here it's been translated for 10.0, 10.11. But anyway, it's just like you see the point here. So clear IP net statistics and then show IP net statistics. We can see that we have one dynamic net and one extended. And you can see that we have allocated one address from our pool. Configuring path using an address example. So this time we don't create a pool because we're going to translate to this IP address on this interface here. So we can translate to one address. So we create an access list that permits, this time we have permitted both networks. And then we just translate, we say IP NAT source list one. And then we don't bind it to pool, we are binding it to the interface. Serial zero forward slash one forward slash zero. And the command overload there enables path. You can't do this with dynamic NAT. Port forwarding is the act of forwarding a network port from one network node to another. A packet sent to the public IP address and a port of a router can be forwarded to a private IP address and a port in the inside network. Port forwarding is helpful in situations where servers have a private address not reachable from the outside network. So to the public address IPv4 address here and of the router and specific destination port of the server. And then the router will forward that because it sees, okay, well, is, since it wants that port number, I'm going to forward it to this server. So HTTP server request coming into Lynx router at 209.165.200.225. So this PC is going to the Lynx router, but with this port number. So if it sees, if the router sees this port number, then it will be able to translate that port number to a private IP address from the port number it translated to a private IP address. To specify a different port, the value of the external port in the single port uh, forwarding windows will be modified. So for example, external port, if somebody says IP address of the router and the port is 8080, then the router will be able to translate that to the web server in the port 80. External user would have to have to use the outside web address with 8080 appended to it. Configuring port forwarding with iOS. In iOS, port forwarding is essentially a static NAT translation with the specified TCP or UDP port numbers. 
So for example, IP NAT inside source static, TCP, that's inside network, the IP address of the server, for example, 192.168.10.254 with port 80, and the outside 209.165.200.225.8080. So for the example, if this client puts this IP address with this port number, then the router will translate it to the web server, will send that communication to the web server. NAT for IPv6, IPv6 um, doesn't really need NAT because there's so many IPv6 addresses. Uh, NAT is a workaround for IPv4 address scarcity. In IPv6, um, there's 128 bits and it, this provides 340 on decillion addresses. So we really, the address space is not an issue with an I, in IPv6 right now. And IPv6 makes IPv4 public private NAT unnecessary by design. However, IPv6 does implement a form of private addresses and it's implemented differently than they are used for IPv4. Private addresses for IPv6 are called unique local addresses. Um, don't confuse them with link local. These are unique local addresses and are private addresses um, and are not meant to provide additional IPv6 address space, but uh, you these are the range from FC00 quote unquote and forward size seven, uh, which results in the first hexed range of FC00 to FDFF. Unique local addresses are also known as a local IPv6 address, and this is not to be confused with link local addresses. You remember the link local, they start with FE80, and they only, on the link, local link, they are available. They can't go from one network to another network, while IPv6, uh, private addresses can. IPv6 also uses NAT, but in much different context. IPv6 NAT is used to provide transparent communication between IPv6. It's for transition. We can use NAT. For example, when we are used in transition from IPv4 to IPv6, we can use NAT. So NAT64 is not intended to be a permanent solution. It is meant to be a transition mechanism. Network address translation, protocol translation, NAT PT, was another NAT-based transition mecha mechanism for IPv6, but is not it now is deprecated by IETF. So NAT64 is now recommended what to use. Thank you very much for watching this section 11.2 configuring NAT. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Asri Krasnishi. Next video, 11.3 troubleshooting NAT. Bye bye.